One of Emmitt Smith's greatest seasons came in 1992 during the Cowboys' first Super Bowl run in 15 years. What the 23-year-old Smith did that season was absolutely amazing. He rushed for 1,700 yards and 18 touchdowns. Emmitt Smith swings to the outside. It's a free silver! You can make the argument that this was his best season of his career. Go off inside the 20-yard line. And Martin Mayhew gets banged down. By but in this video, I will not highlight the entire season. That's for another video. Smith entered week 17 as the second rushing yard leader in the NFL behind Barry Foster. First down, Steelers. The hole right side, Foster. To the point, he's going to score. He was 109 yards away from the record. Although the Chicago Bears weren't the Bears of old, just a few weeks prior, they shut down Barry Foster to just 25 yards rushing. Foster was third in the MVP vote that year. Barry Foster went into the game with 1,444 yards to lead everyone in football, but Trace Armstrong. Tell me, what are they doing to the blockers here? Well, something that hasn't happened to the Steelers throughout most of the season, Chris, domination at the line of scrimmage by the Bears today. So they still had the capability of stopping the run on an elite level. Singletary may have been past his prime, but anytime he is in the middle, you still didn't go into a Bears game thinking that this was a walk in the park. Let's break it down. We're at Texas Stadium and we extend again season's greetings. Emmett Smith with a lot at stake here. He would like very much, both personally and monetarily, to win the second rushing title of his career. The Bears are on a nickel defense with four down linemen, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. The defensive line are in a three and two tech alignment. How do I know? Do you see that defensive tackle right there? That's Chris Zork. Well, notice how he's on the weak side directly over the guard. That's called a two tech alignment. If you pay attention, he's on the weak side, while their three tech is on the strong side. Now, notice that defensive tackle right there, that's Tim Ryan. You can see that he's slightly on the guard's outside shoulder between the guard and the tackle, which means he's a three-tech. Whenever you face an alignment as an offensive coordinator, it's your job to find the mismatch. And because the Bears are overloaded on the strong side, Turner uses that as bait. Also, watch what he does to this linebacker right here. These guys are what? Certain conditions are okay and still takes away the linebacker out of the play by motioning Johnston. Keep in mind that the linebacker was responsible for the B gap, which is right there. Now that he's gone, the Bears line is vulnerable on the weak side. Yes, the great Singletary is there in the middle, but his responsibility is the A gap. But because the linebacker is no longer in the alignment, Singletary has to watch both gaps, which is basically checkmate for North Turner if the offensive line blocks their defenders. What that did was take an extra player away from the weak side. Instead of it being three players, it's now two players. Stepnoski has one job take out Singletary right there in the middle. That way, if the line does their job, there should be a huge hole right there in the B guy. Also pay attention to the offensive line here. Notice how they all are blocking in one direction except for Tune. It's a simple pathway for the B guy. That, that's what you do with a pass race. You try and get him up the field, get him in this position, collapse this side, and then you get that running hole on a little delay or a draw. But the most impressive player in all of this is Smith. Smith's ability to make everything look the same is legendary. He was the Jerry Rice of running backs. Rice made every route look the same and oftentimes look boring. Every route was a go route until it wasn't. Whether he was running a curl, a dig, or a post, it all looked the same. His toughness going inside, outside, this guy is a threat on any play, any time. Pay attention to Smith's feet here. He's pivoting towards the strong side, which is where most teams should run the ball. But watch when he actually gets the ball. It looks like he's running upfield in the A guy. Everyone is guessing, except for Smith and his blockers. He swiftly switches lanes, and the B-Gap opens up like the Red Sea. Bring it to the quarterback. Drop play, Emmett Smith. First down. The perfect deception. He ran in three different directions without wasting time. And if you look at his body, most of it was body positioning. Watch how Smith works the Bears' Mike Singletary. Because of Smith's technique, it looks like he's running up the A gap. Singletary sees it and turns his body towards that guy to attack it. But the moment Singletary loses leverage on the weak side, Smith uses Stepnoski to set him up. With a pass race, you try and get him up the field, get him in this position, 
collapse this side, and then you get that running hole on a little delay or a draw. To Singletary's credit, if you watch carefully, just before the play starts, he's pointing towards the A guy on the weak side of the defense. That's because he knows where the vulnerability is. However, because of Smith's deceptive body positioning before he gets the ball, Singletary leans towards the strong side and loses his leverage. Stemnoski also made a great block on this play. This next play is a direct showcase of Smith's deception and shiftiness. Watching this from television, Smith just looks like he ran through the hole, but watching the film, it was much more complicated and deceptive than that. Smith is lined up behind the strong side of the line of scrimmage. Pay attention to these three defenders as the Bears will try and mug the double A gaps in a zone blitz concept. Gale will shoot up the A gap and Tate will attack the other A gap while defensive tackle Steve McMichael will drop into zone coverage. It was a perfect call against the run, but because Smith had the quickness to shift back towards the other lane, just this simple move threw off Gale. Again, no wasted movements. He's low, he's athletic, he's patient, he has great knee bend. It's like an arch from the greatest painter of all time. Also pay close attention to the defensive tackle Steve McMichael. McMichael's job is to fill this zone. So if Smith runs into this area, he should be there to defend it. But because of Smith's shiftiness behind the line of scrimmage, Smith has him moving all over the field and he didn't even get past the line of scrimmage yet. Right by him. What Sean Gale comes right there, he's free. He runs right by it, Emmett Smith sees him, goes to the right side. The hole was open because of Smith's deception. In fact, if you look at other runs throughout the game, you can see that when he gets the ball, sometimes he'll slightly go to the left or right. Well, that's not because he's trying to figure out what hole to go through. He's working the middle linebacker or the linebacker that's responsible for the gap he's going through. A lot of times, just this one single stutter will get him at least five or six extra yards. The guy was in the art and shoulder pads. most deceptive running back behind the line of scrimmage in history. Watching the film just makes you appreciate him even more. Smith picking his way. Well, when you face a, an offense like Dallas and, and you have a back like Smith, it, it just sets the tone for the whole offense. I mean, he weaves and picks his way through and makes seven or eight yards when really the blocking isn't that fantastic, but he, he makes those linemen look better and he's, he's just a... A tough guy. You've got to be playing very, very strong, gang tackle, disciplined defense to even have a chance to slow that guy down. The Bears were hitting hard this game, but Smith just kept coming. The guy was unbelievable. Singletary really unloaded on him. He does a pretty good hit, but he gets up very quickly. Did you see Emmett Smith, though? He didn't even look at Singletary. Nope. He took that hit. And one thing about running backs and guys that get hit, you don't acknowledge the hit. Emmett Smith just gets up, and he doesn't even look back. He doesn't look at Singletary. He doesn't look at anyone. He just goes right back to the huddle. I'll get up before you do. By halftime, Smith had 94 rushing yards. At this point, all he needs is 15 yards for the record. And I'll tell you, he is going after this rushing record today. I would bet that he gets it. Today. I would bet with you. I would put a crown on his head. This play right here is one of the most classic runs in Smith's career. Substantially, it's also one of the most brutal blocks in Derrick Johnson's career as well. But most importantly, North Turner was the highlight of this play and he wasn't on the field. This is vintage Turner that no one ever talks about anymore. The Bears again are in their nickel formation, but if you count the safety right there, it's basically an eight-man alignment. Again, like earlier, anytime you see a tight end on the line of scrimmage, that means that's the strong side. Most of the time, defenses will line up extra defenders on the strong side, which is what the Bears did here. There's a total of four defenders on that one side. So where does North go? The opposite side. But this is by design. Aikman never called an audible. North uses Novacek as bait to get the defense to over flood on this side so the weak side would be more tolerable. And it worked again like it did all game. But it's not that simple. Nothing is that simple with North Turner. Now, watch Tune and Johnston. North brilliantly disguises this differently. 
Do you remember how earlier in this play, where Tune blocked the end but Moose was motioned out and took this linebacker away from the box? Notice how North doesn't motion Moose out this time he stays in. Because Moose stayed in, if I'm the defense, I'm screaming weak side, weak side. Now I'm not going to move my guys away from the strong side, I'm just alerting them. Having Moose as the lead back changes the entire narrative. Because technically, there is no strong side. If Moose leads Smith to the weak side, then both sides would be evenly set, which is an issue because you're asking your two guys to block what's technically a strong side as well. Again, I know this is not the strong side because Moose isn't on the line of scrimmage. To be football correct, you can't really have two strong sides. If there are two double set tight ends, then there is no weak side or strong side, unless there's a running back shift on one side. But blocking assignments, Moose technically makes the weak side a strong side against two players. This is when things are going to get bad for the Bears. I mean, really bad. Again, watch Tune. He doesn't block the defensive end like he normally would, but instead takes on this linebacker right here, which is a bad day at the office for this guy. But here's what makes Moose the GOAT. His job is to eliminate this defensive end on what is called a kickout. If everything works out, it should go like this. Smith should have another Red Sea moment right through there. But there's a problem. This defender right here is the 6'5", 265 pound Hall of Famer, Richard Dent. He wasn't what he was in the 80s. The guy was still an elite player. He went to the Pro Bowl a year after this season. Johnston was just 6'2", 238 pounds. Going against this 6'5", 265 pound monster. No way should Johnston do what he's about to do to this Bears legend. Johnston is about to put together one of the greatest blocks in NFL history. Wow, did you hear that collision? That was like two buildings colliding against each other. The sound was terrifying. Did you hear that third sound that Dent made? Moose was violent. Smith made this block even more better because of his understanding of football. I showed you a few plays ago how Smith would stutter to set up second level defenders. Bring it to the quarterback. That, that's what you do with a pass race. You try and get him up the field. Get him in this. Get an Smith on the refrigerator, Perry, and then Emmett Smith is going to take the ball right in that hole. See, it starts off as a double team. They go right by him. What Sean Gale comes right there. He's free. He runs right by it. Emmett Smith sees him. Goes. To but Smith on this play had no hesitation whatsoever. The moment he got the ball, he shot straight up field and straight into the record book. And that was the game. The 1992 season has some of the most technical runs I have ever seen from a running back. Smith understood every situation he was in. Yes, he had a great line, but no one knew how to use a line better than Smith. He was the epitome of a chess player who understood how to efficiently use every piece around him. You know what you get when you put together the GOAT running back and the GOAT offensive line? You get the all-time leader in yards and touchdowns in both the regular season and the postseason along with full rushing titles. That was Smith's second rushing yard title in two years. He finished third in the MVP vote that season and Dallas went on to win the Super Bowl. He rushed for 1,700 yards and scored 18 touchdowns. The 92 season will go down as one of the greatest seasons in NFL history for Emma Smith. Until next time, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.